Right, let's get straight into our panel in the respective time tonight. Welcome to Serious Country, CEO of Dairy NZ, Tim Mackle, and uh, CEO of Beef and Lamb New Zealand, Sam McIver. Firstly, I'll start with you, Tim. What's your initial take from Dairy NZ's position on today's budget? Uh, yeah, hi, Sarah and Sam. Uh, good to see you both. Look, I think the, the, the budget's focus on, on jobs, infrastructure, and the environment really has hit the spot. Um, at the end of the day, though, the devil will be in the detail. And I guess like a lot of budgets, when they're released at this time of year, there is a lot more detail to come. So we're keen to see that and be part of shaping that as well. But overall, uh, look, it looks really positive. Sam, from Beef and Lamb New Zealand's perspective, has the government been listening to your wish list to nurture our biggest export earner of the primary sector? Uh, listen, the, the, the way that I sort of see it at the moment, Sarah, it looks like it's a bit of a triage situation. So the first thing is uh, fix the issues that we have with losing jobs, and, and there's a focus on our primary sector with that, which is good. I guess the, the second area will be rebuild the economy, and um, that's yet come out and I'm, I'm going to be really, really interested to see what's in there and obviously as a primary sector we're, we're doing the advocating for some key things in there. Okay, so let's start working through some of those key things. Uh, I want to start with you both on the short term economic stimulus uh, that can reduce this blow of sharply rising unemployment. Tim Derry NZ has recently launched a positive initiative in this space. Can you tell us about that and of course what funding has been announced under the budget that you have been able to wrap your head around? Yeah, so look, I mean, we're all faced with short term acute challenges, none more so than you know, tourism, hospitality, but in our sector and dairy in particular, uh, you know, we, we've got issues around getting uh, animals processed through works, which which actually is a, a linkage we've got with Sam as well. Um, but the big issue around is people. So, you know, in the dairy sector, we've got over 30,000 people on farms and and we have a little over 5,000 people as migrant workers uh, at any one time. And so that's it's a big it's a big number. Clearly, with the disruptions to the um, to, to the borders right now, it means at this time of year when we're bringing more people into New Zealand, getting ready for the next season, that's been disrupted, as it has for a lot of sectors that bring people in. But you know, ours is quite a big number. So uh, on that basis, you know, there is quite a, a, a gap to fill potentially. Even if we were to extend the uh, visas of everyone who is here now, we'd still potentially be at least a thousand people short. Uh, right now, as it happens, there are a thousand jobs in the market. Uh, we've just uh, worked with MPI uh, and, and working with MSD as well, working with the government, which is great, on on a program to bring uh, unemployed, those who find themselves unfortunately unemployed right now, uh, into a training program for about three three weeks uh, in June, give them some practical skills, uh, some theory, uh, and get them on farm as well, get them ready to get into employment and then match farmers up with that. So, look, we're really excited about that initiative and uh, it's just a start and we need to work collectively across all sectors. Mm, good timing with carving coming up, Tim. Yeah, Sam, let's talk about the lifeline being ripped out of the agricultural education sector that we've seen under this government's term. I mean, I'm referring to Taratahi uh, and Telford um, and, and, of course, what needs that we have to be invested to bring people through into the sheep and beef sector. Yeah, I think I think the key um, will be really the chain here, um, you know, and that is... Firstly, attracting people. Uh, secondly, the ability to train people. And then thirdly, the ability to support them um, once they get into employment, whether it's on our farms or in our uh, processing companies. So for me, um, you know, the, the 14.9 million or the 19 million, so to speak, um, is really positive. But actually, we've really got to work to make sure that chain uh, works as a, as a sector, you know, we're the, the largest uh, uh, manufacturing sector employing 92,000 people. You know, most of our shortages are tied up uh, with processing works. And as Tim alluded to, the visa situation, the immigration situation um, is a real pinch point at the moment. So it is very much going to be around that, if you want to describe it, the value chain of attracting people and getting them successfully into jobs. Crossing over to the environment spend, $1.1 billion, and uh, part of that was the jobs in nature. Sam, that's a, that's a positive for a lot of the work that you've been doing with Taste Pure Nature and the flow-on effect to uh, our added value products as well? Yeah, listen, there, there's no doubt um, 
that, that farmers are committed to making environmental change on their farms, and that has a significant cost. I know uh, both Tim and ourselves have done a, a lot of analysis really around some of the proposed government policies and what the cost of that change would be on farm. Listen, I just... I just want to premise this by saying, actually, there's still some work to be done to get the government policies uh, right in the first place. And, and so we've got some work to do to still advocate on that and make sure that that's right. But by the same token, the support that the government is offering here, uh, whether it's biodiversity planting on farm, whether it might be helping to, to fence, to plant trees, uh, pest control, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all of those things um, are really positive. Absolutely. Of course, devil in the detail uh, when it comes to the cash, but definitely, Tim, it's about the policy. We talk a lot on Serious Country around uncertainty and the woes that that brings. We just would love some certainty around this policy that's uh, pending for now too long. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Echo Sam's uh, sentiment said that this really positive announcement today, a um, billion dollars, 400 million for regional environment projects like wetlands. So we have potential with some of these initiatives to actually reduce the loading you know on our productive sectors which which could help New Zealand not just farmers uh, by actually getting more juice out of the orange so to speak with less environmental impact so that's what we should be aspiring to so that's positive but Sam's right um, there's still a huge policy piece on the table and uh, and, and and I guess the primary sector in general are not, are not happy with the original proposal um, these initiatives are great but at the same time you know our budget our forecasting economic modeling suggests that you know, the proposal where it stands could still cost us 80 billion out to 2050 cumulatively. So those numbers are pretty big too. So um, we've got to get both initiatives right. These positive things on the ground and also the policy piece as Sam said. Wow, 80 billion. Um, hopefully there's some economic sense when the policy starts to be refined and then released, but uh, you never know. Infrastructure, let's cross to that. There will be a major stimulus of improving uh, productivity in the environmental management of our food and fibre uh, if it's allocated into the strategic projects in regional uh, New Zealand. Um, Sam, are you disappointed that there wasn't something specific in the announcement around water storage and reticulation? Yeah, I, I guess to a certain extent, Sarah, I expect that to come in the next round. Um, but, but yes, well, my expectation is is that we will see that. Um, if we think about one of the most limiting factors in New Zealand agriculture right now is the availability and use of water. And, and so that's also uh, a deficiency that we have for our urban centres, uh, for that matter. So for me, firstly, I'm really interested in us understanding our water resources at the same time, I'm really interested in this understanding our soil resources as well. In New Zealand at the moment, we, we haven't fully mapped um, all of our soils. And if you think about those two critical things for productivity, um, it's soil and water. So my expectation is, yes, uh, understanding our water resources. Secondly, infrastructure around it. And listen, um, irrigation has been a dirty word, but it is still a tremendous, tremendous opportunity uh, for New Zealand agriculture. So my expectation and my desire is to see that back on the table, but in a way that works, uh, I guess, in tandem with our environmental footprint. Uh, Tim? Yeah, look, again, agree with Sam. Always agree with Sam, right, Sam? Um, I think you know, $3 billion investment infrastructure is welcome for, for New Zealand. And, and I guess while the dollars are there, the detail's not just yet. And so, look, we're keen, Darian said, uh, along with our partners, uh, to, to engage with the government in the coming months um, to ensure really that the project's important to farmers, like water storage, Sam mentioned, rural broadband, mobile, and COVID, of course, the lockdown yeah. has really underscored how crucial that is to rural areas, not just urban areas. Um, you know, that they are priorities. It's not just all spent on the urban areas. And so, you know, and the other thing, Sarah, is we've got to ensure that, you know, any investment as a country is strategic, and I'm sure the government are wanting to do that too, that it's got a long-term vision that will pay dividends for years to come, whether it be economic or environmental benefits, because at the end of the day, look, our kids are going to be paying for this stuff too, so they deserve to see the benefits in their time as well. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, totally understand that completely. Just lastly, I want to close a uh, comment from both of you around the morale out there with your uh, farmer levy payers and uh, and a word to them about uh, getting through this because uh, what a way to, to go out the other side and then get taxed heavily to pay it all back. Yeah, I must say, um, Sarah, as I reflect on the last how many weeks, it's been I suppose eight weeks or so now, 
um, I've been tremendously proud of our sector. Um, and, and for two reasons, really. One is we've been asked as a sector to stand up on behalf of New Zealand. We've had the privilege of continuing to operate, but we've been asked to stand up and really do our job. And to a person, I've been absolutely proud of the way that our farmers have stood up and and to our um, our processors as well, who have actually, you know, Tim's alluded to, we've still got challenges around dealing with some stock on farm, but our processors have done an outstanding job and particularly in, in a, what I guess is a is a market internationally that's in turmoil, turmoil their agility around um, shifting markets um, has been just tremendous. And I think, too, the way that our industry has reached out to urban communities, shown some, shown some empathy and some care, and just the practical steps I've, I've taken to support urban New Zealanders has been great, too. Yeah, and Tim, I just want to say congratulations. Oh, we've been playing it a lot on Serious Country, the wonderful video that Dairy NZ put out as well. Oh, yeah, thanks, Sarah. Look, I, th- I think it just reflects the fact, as Sam said, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of quiet pride out there, you know, from farmers feeling like they are making a difference. I mean, at the end of the day, most farmers, and, you know, Sam and I both grew up on farms. Our families are doing that. They do what they do because they believe in it and they feel good about producing food and working with animals and the land and water and all that stuff. So... Um, the last few years have been pretty tough in terms of challenging um, their values, you know, and the fact that we're actually doing something pretty special. And I think a time like this highlights how special producing food really is. So they're getting on with it with quite resolve and uh, when that's what we need to do if things get a bit rockier in the next uh, little while. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. CEO of Dairy NZ, Tim Mackle, and uh, CEO of Beef and Lamb, uh, Sam McIver, both off to have their dinner now after what would have been a big day. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time to join us. This is Sarah's Country.